national championships for hill climbing was on the weekend on Sunday. And so we have the women's results here. Haley Simmons won 4.17, very solid time. Jocelyn Lambton, who I thought was going to win, 12 seconds behind. And then Rebecca Richardson, who I also thought would do well. A couple other people I mentioned, Fiona Burney, came and did a really good ride as well. Um, so, yeah, no, it was a pretty, pretty solid time. Um, it was about what I expected, about 14.30-ish. I said 15, but a little bit faster than that. Anyway, we go over to the men's. Ed Laverick absolutely smashed the time set by himself last year when he got the uh, record and, I guess, further beat him on Strava. But in a proper race, he smashed the time. And uh, 11.37, I didn't think it was possible. I thought it would be low 12s. Like, you know, 12.13 was it before. I thought, you know, 12 minutes, maybe nothing more. And Paul Double as well, I, I mentioned him. He raced for Colpack. I said Zappy last time, but I, I knew my friend's really good. Ollie is good friends with him. And uh, he was saying he's on top top condition. And Richard Boss, I missed out last year. Nan Caro is another lad I said. Dan Evans, unfortunately, Feathery had a bit of a shocker, but we'll get we'll get into that. And Gildale's got a top 10 as well. Leon Wright, um, good ride from him. Cam Biddle, Tom Bell, all, all, all sort of up there, up there. Anyway, we'll go over to women's first and we'll uh, discuss what so as I said on Haley so, Simmons is 12 seconds uh, ahead of Justin Loudon and Rebecca Richardson etc etc uh, Marika Sanema who's won a fair few hill climbs uh, Fiona Burney who I thought would do well and Kate McTeer so anyway, we'll go over to the climb itself uh, this is the best segment 5.1 kilometers uh, roughly maybe eight seconds quicker but you know more, more or less what we're expecting um, so yeah that, oh no no sorry yeah eight, about eight seconds quicker so anyway Jocelyn Lano has the queue. I'm, unfortunately, I, I messaged Hayley Simmons and said, all right, what's happened to your power? Um, she said she doesn't use Strava ever. And she said on this attempt, uh, her power meter played up or something. So she didn't have any numbers, but she was disappointed that she didn't have any numbers. So uh, we'll just have to go on what Jossie Loudon did and Rebecca Richardson did and, you know, extrapolate from there. Uh, so we'll go over to Jocelyn Loudon's ride. Uh, 309 watts for 14 minutes 21. So again, very, very solid. Uh, heart rate. Doesn't get mega high, but some people's does, some people's doesn't. Um, speed readings are a little bit erratic, but uh, nothing crazy. So you'll you'll see a trend that generally people, for the first half or so before the real speed bump, so you know first 2.4k more or less, you know eight nine minutes, um, around eight minutes ba ba roughly, go harder. So you see 315 watts because it's steeper. It's eight percent for the first couple two kilometers, and then you'll see that after this. Um, it then is a lot faster, it's 5%, she goes 24k an hour, and you know, obviously at this part, when you go 50k an hour or so, 45, 50k an hour, you don't want to be doing much watts, and she's not, she's doing 278, so it's good pacing from her, uh, it's very interesting what I'm in the men's as well, uh, in regards to that, because you obviously we can track in real time the comparisons, uh, for the women's we'll, we'll also do the same, but obviously we don't have the winner, so that's a bit annoying, um, so I, I mean, obviously this weight is what she's put into Strava, um, if anyone, there's people ask me what this thing is, it's called Strava Source, uh, it's a top, top uh, segment uh, analyzer and also just general Strava tool, um, I'm a big fan of it and um, it's not annoying like Stravistics, it's just, you know, it gives you normalized, you can set their FTP, she's put it as, a, as 250 but I can click and change it to whatever um, and then it gives you the intensity and TSS, the only thing is it doesn't work for normalized power if it's below 20 minutes, I'm not sure why but anyway, it is what it is. Uh, yeah, so 56 kilos, uh, and she's going to be th 308 watts, so we've got one here, and uh, we'll see it's about 5.5 or so, 5.45, so very, very solid from Jossie Loudon, and it's, you know, what, what you expect from her, she's national circuit race champs, so I thought she'd do well, and um, she's had good results all year, rides for drops, UCI team now, done Tour of California and other races like Tour of Norway, so fair enough. Uh, Rebecca Richardson is also... Did a really solid ride. She was did about 300 watts, I believe it was, um, for the effort. Uh, a weight again, it's always a mystery. You don't, we don't really know um, what it is. She says she's lighter than ever. She's put 58 kilos on Strava, so potentially she could be less. Um, I think that that could be could be correct. She did 300 watts, so we can go back here 300 watts, and she was, you know, 12 seconds off. So you know, you'd, you'd expect her to be, you know, maybe 57 kilos, 56, maybe the same. And obviously bike differences, Rebecca Richardson, does she have a lighter bike than Justin Allen? I didn't see what bike Justin Allen rode, but, um, you know, Rebecca has a super, super light white bike. So that will make a slight difference as well. Uh, but she would be doing, you know, around 5.45 watts per kilo. So um, I think we'll just go for a comparison now um, and see exactly what it is. It will do the men's, but we can, we can change this all um, to the women's, which is good. Um, so... 
yeah, it's just a shame we don't have everyone's power, but we'll just lob all the top top four in. Oh, uh, there we go. And now we'll get rid of Paul Dubal, and then we should be away. Uh, no, not Paul Dubal, so we need to get rid of... I know, that's what we want. Okay, right, so we can see, you can see here, you know, first bit of Rupert Bradford, which is nine seconds up, KBT is 13 down, Senema is eight seconds, so, you know, not, not too much in it. Um, then again, this could be some GPS errors, but you'll suddenly see everyone perks up here. I saw that in the, the men's data as well. You'll see that that is also the same. Um, and Rebecca Richards is still six seconds up. So, you know, at this point here, Jossie and Rebecca are looking pretty close, you know, within within one second. Um, and then everyone else is obviously a little bit further down. Um, and you'll you'll sort of see that the, it then sort of stabilizes and Rebecca Richards is just about 12 seconds down. And uh, Marie and Kate are both just, you know, obviously going slower and slower until the last little kick, and then maybe they save more back because if you look at the bottom two, they actually gain time, and Rebecca Richardson also gains time. So potentially, Josh Loudon went a little bit too hard, didn't have as much for the kick, um, which is what I thought. Because if we go back to her file, you'll see that the last minute and a half, like, is only three nineteen, so it's not that much more. Um, but if we look at, I'm pretty sure her last minute and a half, well. Obviously not that, but um, it was like, yeah, like 3.33, so as a percentage, obviously it's, it's higher, um, was higher outright, but also if you think about her average as well, because she wrote a 10 watts less on the average, so she obviously surged a lot more, different pacing strategies, it is what it is. I mean, I think this climb is interesting in pacing strategies to some degree, but I still think, you know, generally the strongest rider will win on this. It's not like if you have a radically different pacing strategy, you'll be making up 10, 15 seconds, you might say five maybe, but none of these, none of the national titles were won by you know, five seconds, I think the men's was nine, and this was, what, 14, wasn't it? Yeah, four, uh, no, 12, sorry, so I think pacing obviously helps, I mean, if you'd completely messed up, yeah, for sure, but, you know, everyone's pre-rode the climb, I assume, everyone's looked into it, even on Strava, got in my windsock, plugged in the numbers, etc, etc, um, so yeah, obviously Jossie's, I think, going out with Dan Bingham, so he, he's obviously an absolute machine when it comes to the numbers, so for sure, like, she wouldn't just have done on feel like there would have been a, a pacing strategy, Laverick had the same, and I assume most most riders on the day would have you know, looked into it um, and thought either just on calculations or just on feel from riding a climb, looking for wind, etc., etc. Um, so yeah, now we'll move over to the men's. We've got Ed Laverick, who won. I didn't predict him to win. Uh, I thought Andrew Feather was mainly based on their smaller smaller hill climb. So Ed Laverick did 425 watts for this effort, and for Hey, uh, sorry for Barrington, which is six minutes forty. He got the course record at four hundred and thirty watts. Now I didn't think that a five watt difference over almost double the length of time is possible for almost anyone. So either he was training significantly harder through Barrington, and that he didn't taper at all, and that's why he couldn't do as many watts as he could have done. Um, that must have been it, in my opinion, or or something else. But anyway, so again, he. The pacing strategy was generally hard at the beginning, so the first eight minutes, 425 watts. Then you'll see he sort of has this part here where, you know, speeds up and, you know, there's no point in doing big power. So he does 334 watts, which is not recovery for him, but it's, it's well below threshold. His threshold, I think, is about 360, based on his 20 minute power of being about 395 ish, so it's 360, 365. And then for the last bit, he absolutely smashes it. 494 watts for the last one minute, 42. And sort of at the end, going up to five, 600 watts. And I think the pacing strategy by him was probably one of the best I've seen for the guys. Because I think a lot of them, or well, some of them just blew up. Some of them went out way too hard. But I think the speed he reached was 51.1. And I don't think anyone else reached that speed. So obviously he was getting properly arrow and just like saving himself as much as possible. And I guess he's done the hill climb he did it once last year. And he did it once this year in the Tottenham Spire stage race. So obviously he knows the hill climb pretty well. Um, so yeah, well done for him. Absolutely ridiculous numbers, like 7.2 watts per kilo for 11 minutes 40, which is just quite frankly off the chart. I mean, like normally people say 7 watts per kilo for 10 minutes is like, you know, world tour's contract. I know Tim Wellens posted that he did 490 watts and he weighs, you know, 70 kilos, so like 7 watts per kilo. But this is way more impressive. So then we have second place. So again, I, I thought... Paul Dubal, now he, he didn't have the best preparation. We looked on his Strava, he didn't ride for the two weeks before, not ideal. Um, he also got a puncture on the line, and apparently his bike wasn't super light, but he still bangs out seven watts per kilo for <laughs> 11 minutes 38. So, I mean, 
people could argue that if he'd really prepared well, he could have potentially won it. But then I guess that's part of cycling. I mean, if you don't prepare well, you know, you're not you're not gonna you're not gonna win it in comparison to people like Ed Laverick, who's basically taken to this seriously for the last twelve months. So if you just turn up on the day, but it does show that he's an absolute talent. This boy, um, super light. Again, he sort of backed off a little bit in this section here, three hundred and twenty-six, but not as much as Ed Laverick. He thinks average was four hundred, and then at the end he sort of like surge but again not as hard um really and then the beginning part i guess is just like went harder 412 watts so pretty pretty impressive uh we can get the comparison up potentially if we if we want um that that could be done um if we compare efforts here and we will be able to see what paul Dougal did so you can see here actually laverick was miles up really now on the flat section, he saved himself. And look, Paul Dool was only two seconds behind now, but Laverick was saving himself a lot more and then just absolutely smashed it at the end and was about nine seconds. But it's quite interesting when you think about this, that he's 14 seconds behind straight away. So Laverick really did go out super hard. And then I guess this part here really recovered for that last match. Because here it's like with 10 minutes to go there at the same time, like, sorry, 10 minutes gone there at the same time. And then it's only at the very last part where Laverick bangs out like 490 watts or whatever it was for the last minute 40. Um, we'll have a look at this. So yeah, the last minute was probably like 518 watts. Um, so yeah, that's that's bonkers. Um, and that is why you want pacing strategy pretty good. You then got some more people. So Richard Bustle, he says he weighs 75 kilos. That's obviously fake news because the watts don't add up. Apparently he ran a disc wheel, not 100% sure. He did 422 watts. Average 25k an hour. Again, pacing strategy, interesting. I think it's just like 350 watts over that part. Probably a bit too high if you base it on what Laverick did, where he really did soft pedal on that. I mean, not soft pedaling at 330 watts, but you know what I mean? Like for him, it is. Um, and then the last minute, he did he did surge pretty hard. So potentially, yeah, the beginning part, he didn't go that hard, which is an interesting strategy. I'm not, obviously that that was not the best in hindsight because, you know, if you, if you average is 422 and for the first well, more than half you're doing 399 where it's steeper than this middle part here i think this middle part here must have averaged like yeah 390 to go 31 and a half k an hour like maybe you thought with a disc wheel oh, it's better to get more aero but like don't know mate surely it would have made more sense but more power on the steepest part but anyway it is what it is he, he shows his strategy and then we have andrew feather who so in the bike radar video they posted this week he said he wanted to do 440 watts which is 6.9 watts per kilo so even if he had done that, he wouldn't have won, in my opinion, because he's done 10 watts more, but he weighs at least four kilos more than Laverick. So I think, like, I expected Laverick to do at 400, 410 based on previous performances at, like, 58, 59 kilos. And I expected, yeah, Feather to do, like, 440. And like, that's why I thought Feather would win. But Laverick banged out 430 or 425. So that was a huge difference. Um, but, yeah, Andrew Feather, you can see, went out at 450. So obviously, he was on his target pace. Um, and if we look at the first half of the climb, 440, a little bit below what he wanted because he's probably going to positively split it as i said but then we look at this part here and that's when you know like for four minutes he averaged 355 he got down to like 160 watts here or something so you could tell that he just wasn't on a good day he went out hard and then you know normally you'd expect it to, to for him to continue at that pace but he just clearly couldn't and for the last minute or well, not the last minute sorry but the last minute and a half or so he only averaged 460 so for a heavier guy that's not ideal so you know, it's interesting to look at the whole pacing strategies for everyone else. We can, we'll, we'll lob some more people in, like him, Feather, Nancaro. Unfortunately, Nancaro doesn't have any power data. It would be very nice if he did, but, you know, it is what it is. Um, and then sort of everyone after that, um, not too interested in, to be honest. Obviously, very strong rides. I don't want to be disrespectful or anything, but, like, I'm just thinking, you know, just for the win. Um, and we'll see here that, like... Ed Laverick is the is the pace setter, um, and you can see that Paul Dool is far far ahead um, on this particular part here. So actually, sorry, what I said before was wrong. I was getting confused. Paul Dool was the worst, and he went out hardest, and then Laverick got him at the got him at the end. Um, and then if we look at sort of like Andrew Feather, like I mean, four minutes in, Feather's on the same time as Laverick, more or less. You know, like. So that's, you know, obviously a good ride. Dan Evans was sort of behind. And this point here was, um, Laverick must have really gone because suddenly everyone's time drops here. You suddenly see from there going from like 30 seconds to 30 seconds behind. And then just over this little steep bit, Laverick just keeps it going. 
and then just surges away from absolutely everyone in that last part and puts, you know, I mean, in the last 500 meters, but nine, nine seconds away from Paul Dubal. And at one point, he was like 14 seconds behind. So maybe Dubal got a bit too excited. Lavrik paced it properly and went hard at the beginning, not too hard on this part here, just sort of regained his form and then smashed it at the end. Sorry about before, I was getting a bit confused. So yeah, Paul Dubal went out the hardest. But yeah, it's pretty interesting. I do enjoy a little bit of comparisons. And um, it was harder than I expected. I thought seven watts per kilo would win. Uh, that was my my um, expectation that seven watts per kilo would win this. But now it's 7.2. So I think it shows the caliber of UK hill climbing is, is top. Uh, I don't think, you know, if like Yates, he just turned up and tried to bang, I don't think he'd do it. I think, you know, if he, if he trained properly for it, he would have done. But 7.2 watts per kilo is is mad. Like it really is. Like there's no other way of describing it. Like, you know, that is top, top numbers. And, um, you know, obviously if there was a 12 minute hill climb in the Grand Tour, I mean, you'd expect Ad Laverick to come top 10 for sure. But unfortunately racing is more than just power numbers on a 12 minute climb. But like physiologically, he's... He's unreal. I mean, it's is mad. Um, but I also think the other thing that's mad is just that the the number of people who are banging out, like Dan Evans did 4.20, so just like 6.8 watts per kilo, more or less. The number of people banging out well over 6.5, you know, well over 6.8, really, for 20 minutes, for, sorry, for 12 minutes is, is bonkers. That means, you know, if you extrapolate for 20 minutes, you've got a lot of people riding at 6.4, 6.3 watts per kilo for 20 minutes, which is what we saw up um, Great Dunfell. And I think that does show that if amateurs are doing this, then World Tour boys are doing significantly more. Um, and it shows pretty, that the UK does have some pretty strong hill climbers. So anyway, cheers for watching. Hope you did enjoy this video. Um, and I'll see you in the next one.